Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priest. So this is subject to the priests. Sons of Aaron. No. Old Testament doctrine. The priests, the sons of Aaron. We're not in the law, but Revelation 1 gives us the account that we are priests. So, not for means of salvation, but it would be good to hear to what God said about the priests. I don't call myself father such and such, but I do offer up prayers and sacrifices to God. And say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but of his kin, family, there, that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, for his father, for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother, and for his sister, a virgin, that is nigh unto him, which had, which had no husband, for her may he be defiled. Now, when they're in the oath of, oath of office, the service, the minister of the office, in their priestly garbs, doing the service of God. And they get, well, I'm going to say a phone call, boy am I. They get a call saying, hey, you know what, your father's died. You still got to continue with that service at the tabernacle. And we've seen that with Ahab, Ahab and Abihu with Aaron. Hey, your sons are dead. But you still got the oath of consecration. And you apply that today. Dead as in they're not in the light of God. They're not serving God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. Jesus said, if you hate not your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, and, and the entire family, you can't be the disciple. Under the Christian, under the discipleship that we have today is, dead means dead in trespasses and sins, without God, without hope. For his sister, a virgin. So, the Bible speaks about virgin. She's not married. Still under the family of her father, which is his father, that is nigh unto him, which has no husband, for he may, for her he may be defiled. So if a woman is not married, she's still under her father. Once she joins to a husband, then she's joined to him. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man. There are no kings. Yeah, there are no presidents or whatever world leaders. You are under the realm of God and a kingdom. The rulership, the ownership of this nation called Israel, the supreme being is the supreme being, the almighty God. And under God, you have the man who is the high priest. He's the all of all, all. And under him he has his sons, the Levites. Now, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. The priests were the sons of Aaron. We are the sons of God. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. Aaron's a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our high priest. And he doesn't need to make an offering every year. He sat down once after he made one offering. One atonement. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. So chief man of human beings. Of Israel. 
Over them are the priests, and over them are is the high priest. Among his people, the Jewish people, to profane himself. Okay, as ambassadors, as as Christ has said, we are pre we are not to defame ourselves. We're not to profane ourselves. We're not to defile ourselves. The world ought to look at us as as particular, weird, as Israel was to be. You don't do what we do. You don't act way we act. Thou shalt not make baldness upon thy head, shaving completely. Neither shall they neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard, let it grow. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh, and literal cuttings. Gouging themselves. And you find this in nations under religions where they're cutting themselves they're bleeding themselves for the purpose of god will be pleased if i cut myself they'll go up and down stairs where there's been glass broken where there are knives and this is repentance to god by my sinful blood that the gods will be happy god says knock that off don't be involved with it we don't shed our blood christ has shed his blood Thou shalt be holy unto their God. We're to be holy. Nothing wrong with that as far as the Old Testament. We're to be holy. And not profane the name of their God. You know, Christians today profane God's name by how they live. They give a poor and terrible testimony of God. Some people just wish you just don't tell anybody. If you're a Christian, you believe, you're saved, just keep it quiet. Shut up. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Okay, that's not us. We don't burn anything for, for salvation. We don't burn anything. We just offer up prayer, which is a type of that incense. But we don't burn nothing. We don't burn candles. That's Old Testament. You walk up and put a 25 cents in a candle thing and burn a candle for God. That's Old Testament. That's not today. Now, you burn candles because you like the smell of it, you like the light of it. Okay, that's perfectly fine, but not for God. We don't offer no fire, no burnt offerings, no animals to God. And the bread of their God. Again, that bread is the food. There are people on Halloween, they'll go to the graveyard and bring food to the grave for their relatives to eat. They're the pharaohs. When they die, they put all the food and all the stuff in their burial chamber. But it's to God, capital G. They do offer, therefore they shall be holy. So since you are in charge of that, that altar, since you are in charge of that tabernacle, you guys are the of all the of the Israelites. You're the example. Thou shalt not take a wife that is a whore. Boy, we saw that last night or the other night. Now here is whore as selling herself. And also what we all read, it could be also a wife that is involved in religions. She's a whoredom to religion, spiritual whoredom or physical whoredom or profane. She's just vile, wicked. And you shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. Uh, pure, undefiled marriage there to have. Thou shalt sanctify, set apart him, therefore, for he offers the bread of thy God upon the altar, upon the table. No plain Levite could do that. We have the word of God. This is the bread. Jesus said in, in Deuteronomy, he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Only we can handle the word of God. What separates us priests as other worldly religions, priests, and their people? They don't want you in the Word of God. And if I were to take somebody under a priest and open the Bible with them, show them their religion. God has given me knowledge of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not His. I'm His by the blood and the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. I have been in charge as a priest of offering prayers for people, whether saved or lost. I am in charge with the bread that's set out on the table, six and six, 66 books. You got more than more, six, 
you got more books than 66 books in your Bible, you ain't got the bread. And that bread was set out by the candle. That candlestick, seven lights, were to be trimmed, were to have the, the oil, olive type of the Holy Spirit. You're to trim that. You're to take care of that. That's what we're to do. We're to keep up on the Word of God. We're to keep up on our prayer. We're to keep our wicks trimmed. And under the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9, remove that excess. Remove that stuff that's already been burnt. Remove the sin. He shall be holy unto thee, for I, the Lord, which sanctifies, set apart, you am holy. We're to be God-like. We're to be Christ-like. Christian means Christ-like. With Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus, that means we are to be a holy living. We're to be doing right. We're to be setting our standard. I don't care what the world says about a Christian. That is not that church. That is not that religion. The world has no idea what Christian is. But God does. And to be a Christian is to be a child of God by the testimony and by the gospel of Jesus Christ to finish work outside of nothing else, no works. My life is to be holy before God. If my life is holy before God, then I can... People who work around me, live around me, and have anything to do with me is going to see God shine through me. See, I'm not, I'm not to do right by other people. One of the biggest things a Christian had ought to be to live right is Jesus is coming, right? And if Jesus is coming and we have no idea he is coming, we ought to be clean lives. We ought to be holy lives. So the fact is, if we really believe Jesus is coming... What will he find us do when he comes? Will he catch us off guard or will he catch us being holy? So we please God and then we'll have a wonderful te testimony of God, clean vessels. The daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, paid sex, sells herself, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. Wow. All right. Would you do that? No. But do you see what God's anger and, and punishment and judgment is upon a woman who, who is a whore? God says burn her. Burn is, is a capital offense. It, it, it's your suffering. You don't go easy. You don't suffocate like if you're in a house fire and you know you bring the toxic fumes and smoke and many people in a house fire die of uh, uh, CO poisoning before they do by burning. Though their body be charcoal burnt, most cases they died before that fire even touched them. Here, fire, death by fire, and if she is like God has said, profane. She is not in the standard of God. She's not doing right. She will open her eyes from life to hell. When she closes her eye, when she closes her eyes to this life. She goes off into eternity from flames into flames. Keep yourself right. He that is a high priest. That's the above of all above. Before any kings. Among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured. And you would do that when you sanctify and you set apart that high priest. You would pour that oil upon his head. And that is consecrated to be put on the garments. We read about the priestly garb. Shall not uncover his head, nor rend his clothes. So he's to keep his hair on his head. He's not to shave it off. Certain religions have you shave your head. Rip your clothes. Rend your clothes. That's where you take your garments and you're in agony. You are in just, oh, you're just in awe. You just pull your clothes apart. You're in sadness or you're, you're angry. And God says, don't do that. Control it. Neither shall he go. I don't think Jesus ever rend his clothes. And Jesus never shaved his head. We're looking at the high priest, or we're seeing Jesus Christ. 
Neither shall he go into any dead body. Well, he touched dead bodies. He brought them alive. No one died around Jesus. So in a way, he did not really defile this because no dead body stayed dead around him. He sat down and had a meal with a man that was dead for three days. You're not going to defile Jesus. You're not going to defile my high priest. No way. He's the Lamb of God. He became the sacrifice upon the altar for sin. If any high priest jumped on that burnt offering, on that altar, he ain't going to do nothing. But Jesus Christ, when he willingly gave himself, you're not going to soil him. So he, the high priest couldn't go to a dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. If they do wrong, if they do wickedness, he's not to walk after him. He's not to do right. Their way. Their way, their right is, we're, we're not going to do right. We're not going to follow God. He can't go with him with that. And we learned there for a while, Jesus' brothers and sisters did not follow him. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary. That's the tabernacle. When he is ordained and he is anointed for that service, he can't go out. Can't go out. Nor profane the sanctuary of his God. He can't bring anything in there that don't belong in there. He's got to do right by the law. And Jesus Christ never profaned the sanctuary. Matter of fact, he went in there and cleaned it out one time. What would Jesus do? He'd kick over the tables, knock everything over, chase them out. Profane the sanctuary of God, for the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. One day Jesus Christ is going to be wearing crowns. When he comes back for Israel, when he's angry at the nation. And he comes up and grabs those Jews in Celepetra and comes into the land and settles up that kingdom. And sets up the temple, sets up the priests, sets up the Levites, sets up all the sacrifices as they will be doing that all before him. Wearing the crown of the king. He shall take a wife in her virginity. A widow, a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot. These shall not these shall he not take. Well, that's kind of interesting because you know what the church of bride is? The church of Jesus Christ is a widow, divorced, profane, harlot. So how does he get a bride when the high priest is told, no, you can't marry anything? He washes her with his blood. He sanctifies her to be righteous by his righteousness. In the eyes of God that day when the rapture happens, the rapture, and the judgment seat of Christ, when the last saint has been judged, what sin are you talking about? There'll be no vileness before, when, when Jesus br brings the bride up before his father, God, you're not going to see this. The only way Jesus Christ can fall into this point here, he has to wash his bride from all her sin. And all her wickedness. Isaiah 53. But he shall take a virgin. That's what the bride of Christ is supposed to be. Of his own people to wife. Neither shall he profane his seed. Among his people. When we get to glory. There's going to be no more wickedness. No more sin. No more destruction of the church. And the bride of Christ. For I, the Lord, do sanctify, set apart him. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that has any blemish. So not only is the sacrifices to be blemish free, you are of Levite, you are to be of the priest. And you got a blemish. Let him not approach unto offer the bread of his God. You can't go to the altar. 
You can't go to the labor and you can't go into the holy place. God set standards as for whatsoever man he be that has a blemish. He shall not approach a blind man or lame or he that has a flat nose. Wow, Lord. Or any superfluous which is more than needed or more than a man is given by birth. And you would think that this office of priesthood, you would think God would make them so this would not happen. And yet, God on his son bruised and beat and sent judgment in that cup of sins upon his son without delay and without holding back. And anybody say, well, why did God do And they even said, it was, I think there was a man born blind. And the disciples turned to Jesus and said, well, why is this man blind? Is it his mother? Is it his father? Well, let me show you people. Even the choice, you are the choicest nation of all the nations in the world. And out of those 12 tribes, I have chose the Levites. And out of those Levites, if I give them blemishes, if I give them extra parts, if I give them where they cannot serve me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Without excuse. There's no one in this world can say, I am perfect, I am sinless, except Jesus Christ. And when you look at the priests, even some of them are, are defiled. All men, all of us need Jesus Christ to be saved. No exclusions, even the priests. Or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or a cock back that's he's got a crooked back. Or a dwarf, short. Or that has a blemish in his eye. Or be scurvy, which is disease, or scabbed, or has his stones broken, that's the private areas. No man that has a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, his children, his grandchildren, shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire, the brazen altar. He has a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God, the tabernacle. But he shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy but you can't do service but you're allowed to top part when somebody brought the priest food and offering that was theirs and in their family they had somebody who has a flat nose oh well, look what i brought home from tabernacle today well son we can't give you anything because you got a flat no no that's not the case that child cannot grow up and go in the temple to do service in the temple, but that child can receive of his father's meat or daughter. Only he shall not go into the veil, that's the tabernacle, or the, tab or the holy place too, nor come nigh unto the altar, that's the brazen altar, because he has a blemish. But he's not left out. He can't just do that. He profane not my sanctuaries, plural, the courtyard and the holy place and the most holy place. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of Israel. And there's the standard for the priests. There's the rules and regulations. 